All right, everyone, welcome to probably the most important video that you can watch to help prevent yourself from becoming obsolete in the future. Now, I know that you can see all these different AI tools and models coming out. I know that you can see that people that you might know are getting let go, they're losing their jobs, people are becoming obsolete because their skills are no longer being required and AI is basically coming to take all of their jobs. This is a harsh reality and I'm not going to go into the details on proving that because there's so much data out there. But with all of these new AI tools coming out, there's demand for new skills that are emerging. And if you have the foresight and the speed to learn these skills as fast as possible and master them, then you are going to be set up to be a winner in the future. You're going to be able to future-proof yourself. And that's exactly what I'm going to do in this video. I'm going to be teaching you the most important language that you need to learn for the future, which is the language of AI. How to effectively communicate with the AI to get it to do what you want. And if you don't know who I am, my name is Hamza Beg. I'm the founder of Hexona Systems, which is an award-winning AI automation agency. We just won the Platinum Sasspreneur Award. I also run one of the biggest and fastest growing AI automation communities on school.com called the Automation Incubator. And I'll give you details about all of those at the end, but right now I just want to jump straight into it. So today I'm going to take you through exactly what this language is, how you can master it, and then how you can use it to monetize your skills in the future and become extremely valuable in the marketplace. So the language that we use to communicate to the AI is called prompting, and this is going to be a prompt architecture masterclass teaching you how to be an architect of this language. It's going to be an A to Z guide of speaking the language of the future. So just to start off with what is prompt architecture and why is it important? So it's using natural language, which is how I'm communicating with you right now, but in written English to instruct and guide an AI model to give a certain output or complete a certain task. So it's basically just giving instructions in English. So it sounds pretty simple. It sounds like anyone could do it, right? But the better your prompt is, the better results you get. And the difference between a good and bad prompt are pretty astronomical. So you can see here that for prompting an AI model that generates images, a bad prompt for maybe if you wanted to generate a picture of a lion, a bad prompt could give you something like this, which you know on its own isn't bad, but it's not what we wanted. A good prompt could give you something like this, which is like a perfect picture of a lion, which is like hyper realistic and it has the exact qualities, background and details that you wanted. This is the difference between a good and bad prompt. Now, the really interesting thing is that everyone has access to all of these new AI tools and models, right? Everyone's using the same stuff. But the winners, the ones who are getting the best results with it, the ones who are able to monetize it and get jobs using it, are the ones that can write the best prompts for it. And I'm going to explain to you exactly what a good prompt is. But for example, like the best voice agents, right? The ones that all the businesses are going to buy are the ones that work perfectly, that they can set the best appointments, that they qualify the best leads, that they do the best customer service. And it all comes down to how well the prompt was written on the back end. A voice agent with a bad prompt could maybe start swearing at the lead or it starts making up information or it makes false promises. That's going to cost the business a lot of money. And the only difference between a good and a bad one is who wrote the prompt and how well did they do that. So now I'm going to give you an example of what a prompt actually looks like because it maybe just sounds a bit hypothetical to you. But as I mentioned, it's literally just a set of instructions written in English looking something like this. So this is a prompt that I wrote for one of my chatbots that I actually deployed for a client and it followed up with all of their leads and it actually qualified and booked appointments and tours for them for their daycare. So I'm not going to go through it in extensive detail, but I just want you to understand what a prompt actually looks like. So then you can visualize it as I teach you more about it. But basically you just set the context like, you know, you're a customer service assistant. This is your job. Here's some information. This is your knowledge bank. So I gave it some information that it has to use. So you can, you know, see the pricing, the discount, uh, the qualification criteria, the ages that the daycare works with, you know, your personality, your personality. So young adult, you know, bubbly, friendly, answering rules. So certain things are mandatory. Do not say anything about a confirmation email. Keep your answers short. So you can see here that I go in pretty great detail about making sure that this bot does exactly what I want to do. And this is an example of a very good bot that always achieved the result that we wanted. They never had any hallucinations and never said the wrong answer. And it was able to book appointments for my client on autopilot. This is because I knew how to write a good prompt. I even went into such detail where I was like, use contractions to use more of a casual speaking style. So instead of saying I am, say I am or we're. So like just little things like that, right? When you consider all of these things and you write a good prompt, it's going to make a massive difference between someone who didn't do this and their bot sounds far more robotic than mine. And then that's why people would prefer to buy from me versus anyone else, right? So this is an example of a prompt for an appointment setting chatbot. 
But obviously, depending on what your objective is or what kind of prompting you're doing, then your prompt's gonna look different, right? So going back to this example, they might have just written here, give me a painting of a lion, for example, right? This one, for example, could have been, give me a hyper-realistic image of a lion with a puddle you know, at his feet, showing a reflection of his mane, show him walking through the desert with a cloudy backdrop. You know, all of those little semantics and details, that's going to make a massive difference between these two. So that's essentially what a prompt is and how they work. Now, prompts are going to become very, very essential. They already are, but it's only going to get better because as these AI tools come out and the more and more that they can do, the more prompting is going to be required on the back end. So for example, in the future, or even right now, using something like cursor.ai, you wanna build an app, you wanna build a mobile phone app or a web app, you need to learn how to prompt because if you write an effective prompt, the AI will just write your app for you. And depending on how good your prompt is, depends on the output and how good your app is gonna be. So if you're a good prompter, you're actually a good developer of applications now. You wanna generate a viral video for Instagram? So you can now do AI generated content. You write a good prompt for your video creation, you're gonna get a good video that could poten potentially go viral. If you wanna write 50 blog articles at once, or if you want an AI chatbot to close all of your leads, Whenever an AI agent is going to take over a job or impact some sort of industry, there's going to be a prompt working behind the scenes to make that happen. And therefore, there's going to be a lot of demand for prompt architects, which is going to be you, hopefully, if this video does its job and sparks some action within you. And I'm being 100% serious about this because I pay thousands of dollars a month to an email marketer who runs all of my emails, he writes all the copy and the, the tonality and all of that stuff, right? But I'm like 90% sure that he does chat GPT for all of it. Like he just generates them through ChatGPT and I don't expect him, I never expected him to sit there writing all my emails for me, right? But that's just what the reality is to, in today's day and age. He's probably using ChatGPT and now you might be thinking to yourself, okay, so if you know that he's using ChatGPT, why don't you just do that for yourself? And that's exactly what my point is here. He's a better prompter than me, meaning that for email marketing specifically, he knows how to get the exact outputs that are perfect for what we need done. Me and him both have access to ChatGPT. I don't know what to tell ChatGPT to get the quality of emails that he's able to output. So now his value in the marketplace and the reason why I pay him for what I do is not because of his email marketing abilities of writing copy, but rather his prompting abilities to get AI to write the copy that he wants. Now do you see for all of these different roles how AI has been put into the middle to do all of the heavy lifting and the real skill and value is coming from your ability to just prompt. Prompting is the final skill that we need to learn. So now hopefully you understand why prompting is important and probably the most essential skill. The next is what does good prompting mean? What is the best prompt? What does a good prompt look like? And really there's no perfect formula, right? Everyone, it's almost like an art. Everyone is going to prompt in their own unique way, but there's best practices and tips that everyone can use. So for example, the most effective prompts are the ones that are clear, concise, and specific, and they include examples of what the end result should look like. They provide context in the prompt, like what is the objective, what is the outcome, what are you looking to do? They set the whole tone. It's also great to give the AI a persona, so whether you're a email copywriter or a digital marketing specialist or you know, you're a PhD student helping me with my research and you're an expert at X, Y, and Z, it's great to set the tone so the AI knows what mentality and perspective it should be answering from. Otherwise, it's going to give you vague and generic things, which isn't you know, the most helpful. The more specific you can be, the better. The next is be very mindful and intentional with your wording. No fluff. Don't go on tangents. Don't start talking about things that are irrelevant. Keep it clear and concise because you don't want to confuse the AI. The more firm and direct you can be, the, the more firm and direct you can be, also the better. It's also great to be organized. So you saw within my prompt example that I have subheadings within my prompts for like important instructions, personas, objectives. This is the knowledge base. It knows what to refer to when needed. Now I know a lot of this is still hypothetical, but now how do you actually get good at prompt writing? And honest, the honest answer is trial and error. Like you genuinely just have to try stuff, build stuff, talk to the AI, iterate on your answers. Continuous iterations are very important ones. So you would create a prompt and then you would interact with your result or you would see what it outputs and then you just keep tweaking it. Okay, you know what, it made this mistake, I'm gonna change the wording here or actually I want to remove this sentence and see what happens. So just playing with it back and forth until you get to your desired outcome is the perfect way to do it because no one's perfect on their first try, but those who are quick at iterating and just trying different things are the ones who are going to learn exactly what works and then what doesn't. How are some ways that you can actually practice and exercise this skill? 
If you're not already using ChatGPT, then obviously I highly recommend that to just play around with it, ask it questions, ask it to give you certain outputs. I have a document which I'm about to show you, which gives you like practice examples and outputs that you guys can use. But a great way to practice is just mentally set an objective or intended output that you want and then use AI to get there. For example, if you want to practice text to image prompting, you can use something like Midjourney, which has some free credits which you can use. You can decide that you want to create this image, right? So we're using the line example again, but if you want to recreate this image, now what you can do is you can write a bunch of different prompts to Midjourney until you get this desired output or as close as you can get. Another great tool that Google has is that you can go to the Google Arts and Culture site and search, say, what you see. And then this is actually a practice program that you can use to help you with uh, image prompting. It's actually a game where it's going to give you an image and you have to reverse engineer the prompt to see how close you can get. I'll just try it right here. A gradient of colors starting with light, what color is that? Lime lime green at the top and Himalayan pink at the bottom. The gradient is, does this mean it's vertical? Vertical. So we'll try that. Okay, so yeah, I mean, I got a 62% match, so obviously it could have been better. Um, so then you can see here, this is what they, this is like an example of a perfect prompt. Minimalist painting of a gradient running from pale green to dusty pink. So obviously I need to practice this a bit more and learn my colors and direction, but this is a great example. So you guys can just keep playing with this and then just type your prompts and see how well you do. And it's gonna help you get better at identifying and using the correct words and terminology. The other stuff is obviously for like written things, you can practice blog creation. So you can ask it to write certain articles like about the recent election in an unbiased way that's going to help the average 15 year old understand, right? So you can set these different contexts and you can play around with it, tweak it until you get your desired output, uh, which is really cool. Uh, the other one is that you can also practice speaking with your voice AI. So voice AI is something that just came out. So I highly recommend learning how to prompt for that specifically. We can use high level. I have another video um, in my channel, I think the two videos ago, that teaches you how to create these voice AI bots using Go High Level. And then an example is that you can create an AI assistant for a pizza shop that can accept and take orders, for example. That's a nice and easy one, and then you just practice playing around with it. But there's so many different examples of what you can do. Now, the first output won't be amazing, but you're gonna keep tweaking it until you get what you want, and then you can learn what the do's and don'ts are for good prompting. On top of that, I wanna give you guys further exercises. So I did create a document which you guys can use. I'll show you where to access it, but basically it's like, you know, you start out with an original prompt and then your task is to kind of make it more specific and build upon it. So there's beginner, intermediate, more advanced, different scenarios you can do to practice your prompting. This is completely free to access. I'm gonna show you where to get it. Um, then I've also created a written version of a lot of what we went through inside this video where you can access you know, the fundamentals for crafting effective prompts, so clarity, context, constraints, um, core techniques for optimization, troubleshooting, so you know, how to, once you get a bad output, what are the best practices to you know, mitigate that, what should you remove, things like that, right? So that's going to be written here. And I mentioned this at the beginning, but I do run the biggest automation community, and that's where you can find these resources. So if you click the link in my bio, it's actually just school.com slash automate. But if you go to the classroom, I have a resource vault with free resources, which you guys can access. And then within here, you have both of these documents, prompt architecture homework, and the fundamentals of prompt architecture, which you guys can both access. So just click that, it'll open up the documents. And then you can also use the community as well. So I have one of the most extensive courses on learning automations and AI. So here you guys can actually build out Instagram DM bots, live chat bots, uh, conversational analysis stuff, Instagram comment automations, literally whatever you could need to run a successful automation agency and start a business out of this the same way that I've done, then you have access to that here in this community. You can post questions, you can look through all the wins that other people have had, you know, booking meetings, closing $30,000 clients, you know, getting their first dollars online, signing two clients in a week. Literally, you know, there's everything that you could need inside this one resource that I've built. 
and we just passed 16,000 members, so it's doing extremely well. But the point of this video is that this is the most important skill that you guys can learn as I've explained to you, as I've shown you, AI is going to be able to do all of the heavy lifting and the ones that are going to get rich off the backs of AI are the ones that can control it, the ones that can master it, and the ones that can bend it to their will. That's how you're going to monetize this skill, so I highly recommend that you get started. My course is also perfect for anyone looking to get into the AI automation space. And if you have any questions, you can message me directly inside school as well. I hope this was useful and I'll see you soon.